am a sucker for a good metallic pen. But are these good metallic pens? Let's find out. I've gotten a bunch of requests to take a look at these metallic color pens. They show up on Instagram or on Facebook as like STA, like STA metallic pens or something. I looked them up on Amazon and this was the set I got. They look like this and they are brush pens and they come in a pack of 10. I don't know, they, they look really gorgeous on Instagram, but I have found in the past that sometimes when things look really gorgeous on social media, it doesn't necessarily mean that they actually are. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at these, seeing kind of how they perform and whether or not they're worth it. So let's get some basic information first. So I found these on Amazon. They were actually pretty cheap. They were $10.97 for the pack of 10, which works out to a little over a dollar a pen, which is pretty fucking nice. Information that they've got here, rich variety of colors, high quality water-based ink, acid-free and non-toxic, great for adult coloring books, use on any metal, potter, wood, rubber, glass, plastic, stone, paper, and metal, etc. blah, blah, blah. You can get these for $10.97 in this pack of 10 as brush tips, or for $12.90, you can get them for round tips, but I decided to get the brush ones because those are the ones that looked the most interesting to me. Now, there's a couple things here. A, I wanna see how they perform on cardstock, and I have some black cardstock and some white cardstock because I love when metallic markers perform well on black cardstock. I also am going to test them on this. It's an acrylic stamp block. It said that they can work on surfaces like this, and so I figured that's a good enough place to try it out. I can't promise the most definitive review on these. This is more of a first impressions. I did test them out a little bit the other day, but for right now, we're just gonna take a look at them and see if they are worth giving a shot. Now the pens are shaped like Stabilo, which that maybe that's what the Staw is, I don't know. In that like octagonal shape, which I find kind of uncomfortable to hold. I'm not really a big fan of it. They have 10 different colors. I wanna see if I can figure them out because they don't, if they do say so on the side, they don't. They don't say so on the side. So I'd like to figure, I mean, they should be fairly obvious, but you never know. I'm gonna just put them in order here. Gold, silver, white, red, light green, green, purple, blue, gray, and brown. So let's check out what one looks like. Move this black out of the way so you can see. So here's the pen. I already talked about the shape of the barrel. The cap comes off and it sticks on the end and it's pretty solidly on there, but if you push too hard, it will pop off and it takes kind of a push to get it on there. So here is the brush tip. Let's see if you can kind of see it. There's the brush tip. We'll compare it to the size of a Tombow tip just so you can kind of get a, it's much, much smaller than a Tombow tip as you can see there. It says one to two millimeter. I guess that means it's the size it can go to. So let's test out some brush strokes on this, shall we? So let's see what a good downstroke looks like. I'm gonna zoom you in. And this is the gold one, PS. So there's an upstroke and there's a downstroke. This is a very, very, very flexible nib already I can tell. It's not, for someone with a heavy hand like me, it is not so easy to get that nice, clean upstroke right here. Let's try this gray. They seem to bend just a little bit when you use them. And I, lo I noticed that when I was testing them the other night. So if you are heavy handed, they, they don't spring back really quickly. It takes a little bit of time for them to spring back. Let's check something else out here. Let's see, like if I'm gonna write a word, let's see how like simple it's gonna be. For me, this is really difficult. You can see here, like in this spot, you can see it here in the wobbliness and here. I'm having a lot of trouble controlling this. But that doesn't mean these are like anti, like they're not great. That just might mean that for me, for brush lettering, they may not be the best thing, but they may work better for crafting. I don't know. Colors though on this white cardstock are gorgeous. And I'm gonna kind of tilt it back and forth so you can see the sheen. I'm looking at some of the information on Amazon for some of these pens. The first thing it says for brush tip is for smooth application. Flexible brush tip is perfect for taking school notes or practicing calligraphy. Okay, I'm first I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna say to that is I call bullshit on taking notes with this. I'm like barely putting any pressure down. Like, who the fuck can read that? No, 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 that's some bullshit. Maybe they're round tips, sure, but for taking notes, I, they are way too flexible for that. As for brush calligraphy, again, if you're heavy handed, you may wanna be careful with them, but they are beautiful. So I can see that that might be a really fun thing to do, especially if you have a lighter touch. Let's look at some other of their, their claims here. Colored caps for easy identifying colors. Okay, I mean, yeah, that's, Thank you for that. But I will say that there is no name of the color on the pen, but again, that's kind of semantics. And it says, please do not pull the cap directly and roughly. I'm, I'm not 
really sure then how to, I, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna move forward with that. Water-based ink. These pens feature high quality water-based ink, acid-free and non-toxic use on any surface. All right, here we go. We're gonna test it out on this situation and I'm gonna put it right here on the white so you can see it. I'm gonna take this brown because it's one of the darker colors and I'm gonna write test. Let's find out what happens. I will say, writing on the plastic was a little bit easier than writing on the freaking paper. Let's see here, let's zoom you in so you can take a look at this. As you can see, it did write. It wrote very similar to like a water-based paint pen and I've used those before. Put it on the black so you can kind of see it too. It's not fully opaque, you can see through it. Let me see what the white looks like on here. I'll write on the black so we can see. And the other thing it said about the white was that the white takes about five seconds for the white to appear. Remember the Crayola, the Crayola gel pens and I had to wait forever? It would have been nice if they had warned about that, but at least these guys warn about it. Not on the package or anything, but they warn about it on the Amazon page. And the white looks really milky. I'm not a big fan. Let's try the silver on here. Okay, see the silver is nice and opaque. Look at that. The silver is beautifully opaque. That is really nice. Let me wipe this off and maybe we'll do a test on each of them and see which ones look the best on, on like a smooth, like non-porous surface. It's got a baby wipe here. I'm gonna give this a little wipey wipe and it wipe right off. They weren't dry though. What I'm gonna do is I am going to test these colors on here and then when we do some other tests, we'll come back and we'll see how they wipe off once they've dried. The colors in order just to streak to see how opaque they are and how they look, okay? And we'll look on top of black and on white. All right, one thing I'm gonna point out, and you can see it here, these are spattering a little bit. Now looking at this on top of the black paper, I can say right now that they all are pretty opaque. Here's on top of the white. They're all, they're all pretty opaque, which is nice. The ones that are the least opaque to me are the gold, the silver, and the brown. But all of these colors right here in the middle look really nice on the plastic. And the white is coming in, and there is the white, like it looks white on here but it doesn't have like i don't know if you can see here with like the edges it's not a nice smooth stroke the way the rest of them are it's it's drying pretty like fluidy looking that's a gross word anyway i'm going to set this to the side we will wipe them off after they've dried and see how easy that is other suggestion that they make and this is actually on the package is to keep them stored horizontally and i actually learned this the more you write with them the more they start working kind of shitty because they're upright. So you do have to kind of take breaks in between. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write each color on white and black cardstock. So here are the colors on white, on brown paper, on black paper and on white. As you can see, the white took a little bit of time to wake up and I didn't bother using it on the white paper, but it's not super opaque white. Like that's kind of the most I'm assuming because it's been longer than 15 seconds, quite a bit longer. My thoughts right now on these, I have some very specific ones. A, these colors are so pretty. Like look at how they, look at in the light, like how they, how they um, shift and like the metallic, very, very pretty. I feel like I like some of them on the white better and some of them on the black better. On the white paper, I love the metallic, like the the like gold, the gray, the silver, the brown. I love those on the white paper. I love all the colors on the white paper. In the white paper, they're stunning. On the dark paper, I would say that the brown and the gold kind of disappoint me. They're a little bit like waterier seeming, kind of like the whitest, but the silver, the purple, the, these ones here in the middle, I like them on the black. So I might wanna actually order the round tips because those could be really fun to play with. It comes to the brush nib, I struggled really hard with it and I am heavy handed. If you are lighter handed, you may have a good time, but I'm gonna zoom you in on a couple of spots here and show you some of the situations I ran into. So here on this red, look right here. Can you see that little scrapey spot in between the R and the E that's above the line there? And then you can see it here on the brown as well in like this area. That happened when the plastic part right here, this tip of the nib 
hit paper. And I wasn't even pressing that hard. I was pressing medium hard, but I could have gone a lot harder with my iron grip. And it was still touching the bottom and leaving like little streak there. One of the things you can also see here, and this could be being, just be not used to them, but like you can see the scrape there and how clumsy some of these strokes feel. See it really bad here on the greens that the the brush strokes don't look smooth. They have like a jaggedy look to them, which is fine if you're working with an actual brush pen, but these have a solid nib. And so I would assume that a solid nib would have a solid stroke. Like, like see here, like there's that little streak right there, but I'm even pressing lighter and then coming up and that works okay, but like, if you look closely, these strokes are not very smooth and it's just very hard to control. Now, that doesn't mean that these are bad pens. That just means that A, for a heavy handed person, they're gonna be difficult to work with. And B, I probably take a lot of practice and a lot of correcting to make them look really smooth and nice if that's what you're going for. But the colors are beautiful and the price is actually really good. If you're newer to brush lettering, I don't think I could recommend these at all because one of the things that's difficult when you're brand new to brush lettering is maintaining control of your nib. And these guys, you're not, you're gonna be like crying. In some ways they remind me of the Pigma Micron brush pen and how hard it is to control because I struggle with those as well and I don't recommend those to beginners or heavy handed people. Now let's take a look here at the, now are they dry? Oh, they're not even fully dry yet. I just left a fucking print on those. And that was like a good five or 10 minutes. I guess that's another thing. If you're gonna letter on plastic or something, they take a while to dry. But as you can see, what I was saying holds true. The most opaque colors are the, these guys and the gold, the silver, the white, and the brown are not as opaque. And the white dried very, very, very irregularly and wasn't very smooth at all. So that's my thought on writing on like non-porous surfaces. And then here's my like lightly damp uh, baby wipe. Let's see how they wipe off. They clean off really easily though which is both a good and a bad thing. When you have a water-based paint pen on like a surface like this, they can look really gorgeous. However, you gotta be careful that nothing like touches them or nicks them because that could fuck up the paint and you don't want that to happen unless you seal it. And if you were gonna seal it, I would suggest maybe not using these and getting something a little bit higher quality. Overall, my impression of these pens, are they worth the 10 bucks? Yeah, actually, I think they are worth the 10 bucks. That's a great price for a pack of brush, like metallic markers like this. If you go to Michael's and you buy the metallic pens they have there, which I haven't tried yet, but if you want me to look at it, it's like the whole Kelly Creates line. If you want me to take a look at that, let me know down in the comments. Those metallic brush pens, and I don't know what their quality is like, but they are more expensive than this, I think even with a coupon. So for the price, sure, fuck yeah, give them a try. If you're new, I would seriously not pick these as your first brush pens. I would pick something with a little bit firmer of a nib to mess with, whether it's the Pentel sign pens like these guys, or it's the, the Tombow brush pens. There's a bunch of different ones you could possibly try, and I'll link my brush pen video. That's a, It's a little out of date. I need to add some more pens to it, but if you need some choices as a beginner, these might demoralize you. And if you're heavy handed, I am not gonna tell you don't buy these, but be forewarned that they are going to be a bitch to control. So those are my thoughts. Let me know more markers and pens you want me to take a look at down in the comments. These were actually the reason I even knew about them. I saw them on Instagram, but the reason I even thought to get them to look at was because you guys told me about them. So let me know down in the comments. I actually have some videos with Crayola markers coming up pretty soon. I've got a few different ones to take a look at, including some metallic ones. So yay, metallics, woohoo. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.